Hello, and welcome to another Mr. Peterson podcast. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the scientific method and specifically about how we are going to be writing our lab reports. Now, it would be helpful if you had three uh, handouts available as I go through this. And those three handouts are the uh, scientific method lab report rubric, which you will see a copy of on the screen. Um, it would also be helpful for you to have a copy of the planning sheet that we are using for this first lab report, and maybe a copy of the scientific method um, sheet that I passed out as an example, which has a drop height versus splatter size on the top of, of it. Uh, that's another sheet that I'm going to use as a reference. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start then working our way through the rubric. Um, on, a, on our scientific method lab reports, uh, we start with the problem. And on your problem, it needs to be basically just one sentence. Uh, and But it should be a question sentence. Uh, my example that I like to use is to say, how does the independent variable affect the dependent variable? And the example that I gave you in class was, say, how does drop height affect splatter size? That would be an example of a problem. Now, your research needs to be a paragraph. And we, again, on the example I used in class, uh, you might have wanted to research gravity um, as, or maybe kin kinetic and potential energy as far as how it relates to, again, gravity. Um, those would be two excellent things to research, write down information on that, and then your research paragraph should consist of at least two pieces of information that your group members knew before they began your experiment or before you began the lab or your test or whatever you want to say it. Um, but again, that needs to be a paragraph. The next step would be to state your hypothesis. Your hypothesis should be stated as an if-then statement. It's not a guess, okay? Uh, it is basically when I change the independent variable, what effect is that going to have on the dependent variable? So if I change this IV, then this will happen to the DV. And so in the example I gave you in class, if I change or increase the drop height, then it will have this effect, increase, decrease, splatter size, depending on what your hypothesis is. So again, look back at your research, then form your hypothesis. The next one is the procedure. Now, the procedure should also be a paragraph that kind of explains what you think the independent variable is, what you think the dependent variable is, maybe a discussion on constants and what constants are and what are some constants that we maintained in, in this particular experiment, things like that, and how you knew which was which. Following that, you need to also have the list of necessary steps that you did in the lab. I gave you an example of that in the drop height versus splatter size investigation. So if you want to copy my exact procedure, that's fine in this case. If you chose one of the uh, option two or option three, you are responsible for coming up with those on your own. So it kind of depended on what option you chose as far as what your procedure would be. The next one is going to be start, starting to report some of our results. So now we're ready to start analyzing our data. I have you know, come up with a problem. I've done some research. I have my hypothesis. I've run my test. I've collected my data. I record my data in my data table. I need to make sure that my data table uh, has a clear title and has the, both the independent and dependent variable in the data table. I can then use Excel to graph that information. Uh, several of you uh, asked me today in class as far as should I graph the average. That's fine in the graph. You may graph the average. 
you should include all data in your data table, but graphing just the averages is fine so long as you label it you know, in the title that you're only graphing the averages. I can look at the data in the data table and see what the actual data is, but in the, the graph it's important for me to be able to see, I'm sorry, the data table I can see all the information, the graph can be just the averages, that's fine. Um, again, make sure that your graph has a title. The axes are labeled with units. If necessary, it should have a legend. Uh, you need to have a, you can do either a line or a bar graph in this case. I'm not too worried about understanding the differences between those yet. Um, but, you know, make sure that you have the independent variable on the x-axis and the dependent variable on the y-axis. That's extremely important. And then finally, on your conclusion, your conclusion uh, needs to be two paragraphs in on this. The first paragraph is going to basically provide an explanation as far as what happened in the experiment. Uh, give me a, a summary again of your hypothesis. Tell me whether your hypothesis was, was proven correct or incorrect with the data that you collected. Uh, give me some examples as far as why you make that statement. You know, don't just assume that I'm going to be looking at the graph and interpreting the graph the same way that you did. You know, give me some, some precise examples just like we did in the candy lab that we did in class. Your other paragraph needs to be anything that you thought was inaccurate or wrong with your experiment. Maybe some ideas on ways you could improve it. Uh, you know, maybe you could um, have used, you know, slow motion photography to get a better idea on exactly how the splash occurred. You know, those types of ideas are ways in which you really need to start thinking about the scientific method as a continuous process, not something that you begin and end, but rather, you know, something that, that you continuously either revise your hypothesis or repeat the test to get additional data is, is an important concept. And so it's a, that paragraph should really address that. Also, don't forget that we're going to be evaluating both the steps of the scientific method, but also the writing traits that are associated with that. So make sure that you're using appropriate font and con conventions. Make sure that your ideas and content are specific and clear, that they are, are fully supported and not just things that are kind of off the top of your head. Um, and that the organization needs to be well organized and, and it's important to have some good pace to your paragraphs and have some good transitions between the sections, not just, you know, cut off here and there and be real abrupt. So that's a really good overview of how to write an effective lab report. Uh, we're going to be using this rubric throughout the year, so feel free to reference this uh, podcast anytime you have any questions about how we like write lab reports. Thank you so much.